To finish off these cylinder covers, I need to drill the mounting bolt holes, eight of them on each cover. And for the rear covers, I also need to drill and tap the mounting holes for the slide bars on the top and the bottom of the gland body here. And also drill and tap the two holes for the packing gland on the front of the body here. As there are eight holes for the cover mounting bolts, it does make life quite easy in terms of calculating their positions relative to the center of the cover. For mine, I've adopted a pitch circle diameter of 39 mil, which is halfway between the cylinder bore at 33 and the outside diameter of the covers at 45. I start with the top center hole, which is nice and easy because I use the gland body as reference in the machine vise. After using my edge finder to find the center of the cover, it's just a case of center drilling and then drilling the first hole. With that first hole drilled, I swap out the cover for the cylinder block and use my edge finder to find the center of the bore. And note that I'm using the steam chest face as reference against the back jaw of the chuck. Working with the DRO, I now center the quill over the top of the first hole. But before drilling it, I make a slight mark and do a visual check by putting the cover back in place. As it's looking good, I center drill, drill and tap the first hole. Using that one hole that I've drilled and tapped, I now bolt the cover in place and using the DRO, center drill and drill the remaining seven holes. And for these, I'm using a tapping size drill and going through both the cover and the cylinder body and therefore ensuring that they are perfectly aligned. Next, I remove the cover and tap all seven holes. This does of course mean that I still need to open up the holes in the cover, so I go back to my earlier setup in the machine vise, using the gland body as a reference, find the centre of the cover, and then using the DRO, bring all those holes out to clearance size. To clear the slide bars, the top and the bottom bolts both need to be countersunk, so I refit the covers with the other bolts and cut the countersinks accordingly. As the front covers don't have the gland body to act as a register, I go with the simple option of lock tightening them onto cylinder bodies, finding the center using the edge finder, and then again drilling through both the cover and the cylinder body at tapping size. The other difference here is in the drilling of the clearance holes in the cover. I do these again in situ, but only take the drill down the thickness of the cover at four millimeters. To drill and tap the holes for the slide bars, I use one of the cylinder blocks as a jig by clamping it into the vise as we can see here. I am using my steam chest face as reference, which means I just need to rotate the rear cover by 90 degrees so that the gland body is correctly orientated and I can drill and tap the hole in the top. Unfortunately, when I moved the camera, I forgot to reset the focus and consequently a lot of the video of me drilling and tapping these holes is out of focus. So I'll run through this quite quickly. Firstly, I find the front face here using the edge finder and then go on to find the center left to right. I'm looking for five BA hole in the center left to right and four millimeters back from the front face. So I position the table accordingly under the quill, center drill, drill, and then tap the hole with first a taper and then a plug tap. The real beauty with this approach is that to drill the other side, I just pop the cover off, rotate it 180 degrees and bolt it back in place. I also continue on with the other cylinders cover, but using this cylinder block as my jig, although I do use the edge finder again to find both the center and the front face.
For the gland bolts, Don suggests that these be spotted through from the gland itself, no doubt to fit the PCD of the holes that will be drilled into the gland, but also to ensure that they clear the slide rod bolt holes. As I've yet to make the gland and don't have any material available to make it, I turn to my CAD to come up with the requisite dimensions. With these known, it becomes a simple job of finding the centre of the cover and then drilling and tapping the holes accordingly. However, I do do a quick check, so I mark both holes very lightly and then check with a ruler just to make sure I'm in the right ballpark. Whilst drilling and tapping the holes to the covers, I did notice another mistake. In the video here, you can see where the steam passages start in the circumference of the bore. And if we look at each of these with respect to the top sensor hole, we can see that the right hand passage is much closer to that bolt hole. As the bolt holes have been drilled and tapped with respect to either the cylinder cover or the cylinder bore, I know that they are in the correct places. It therefore means that the steam passage, the one on the right here, is not positioned correctly. The same applies to the other end and to the other cylinder block, so it's a systematic error I made when I machined those passages. When I make mistakes it's normally down to a combination of rushing, not paying enough attention or not planning ahead. Due to the systematic nature of this one, I think this is more about an over-reliance on the DRO and not enough focus on the workpiece in front of me. I don't think this is going to be an issue. It was already very tight in this area. It's now a little bit tighter. It would be bad form to finish one of my videos on a negative note. So let's turn that around to a positive note and look at the work I've completed on drilling and tapping the various holes associated with the covers. So on that more cheerful note, as always, thanks for watching.